Vishal Gondal, thank you so much for joining us. What does disruption mean to you? Disruption for me means leapfrogging technology, generation and speed of whatever you are doing. And the disruption is not small. It is between 10 to 100 X in difference. Uh, and especially with the confluence of technology, adoption of internet, mobile devices, wearable devices, there are so many things which can be done so much faster and efficiently for which effort was taken. So disruption is going to be clearly happening in all these spaces coming forward. Okay, as a leader, uh, what are the challenges that you face because of disruption? In today's world, it's not the big fish which is eating the small fish. It's the faster fish eating the slower fish. So as a leader, the challenge is how do you make sure you are running fast, fast and fast. Because if you slow down, somebody else which could be a startup of five people may come back and completely disrupt what you are doing. So in the previous generation when we were talking about planning and implementation and working on two years and one year development cycles, that's no longer the possibility. You have to think of how can you look at a product and ship the first version out in two months and two weeks. So speed is critical and as a leader, I think if your organization is not rolling out new products, new ideas in a matter of weeks and mo not months, you are already getting obsolete. Okay, give us uh, uh, one or two examples of how you would have uh, uh, tackled disruption, uh, say, in the past year or so. So I think uh, one example for us is how we went and built the Goki hardware. Uh, companies typically spend six months to a year on hardware design, firmware design, and then you know you go to five different companies, and it's a it's a longish process of developing hardware. We of course were a startup and didn't have the ability to do that. So what we did is we went to Shenzhen, we looked at designs, we went in Bangalore, looked at designs, we went to San Francisco, looked at designs, and saw we mishmatched three different designs and came up with the first version in a matter of two months. And from there we kept iterating, and over a period of the last. Uh, year or so we have actually done four releases internally of the hardware and the firmware and today actually as you saw we are just announcing a product with access bank which integrates payment into it we had never thought of payment coming onto our product a year back and if we were looking at our traditional design methodology we would have never been able to implement something because our implementation of design was such short timelines and so fast we are able to do things which others can't so today, if uh, you know any other device manufacturer or service provider has to do this, they just can't do that. But our process of moving fast and being agile has helped us do this. So how uh, does a company like yours, uh, uh, you know, plan its digital strategy? How, what is the duration of that plan? See, I think the the strategy has to stem from the consumer. That is the difference. Previously, you used to design a strategy and then go to the consumer and then ask. So we actually have a group of consumers whom we call titans. So we have the Goki titans defining the strategy for us. So every so this January we had a session with the Goki titans. These are our very, very hardcore users who came and told us that they want to see all these things in the product. And that's how the strategy was designed on let's start building this and not the other way around that this is our product and this is our strategy and will the consumer want it. So it is completely the opposite way of thinking. So our consultants are not, you know, banks and, you know, all these digital agencies. Our consultants are our best consumers. Okay. Uh, you know, technology and digital, uh, what drives what? I think they are the same. Uh, you know, everything is going to be digital and everything so technology has a very good uh, definition, right? That whatever was made when you were not born is technology. So today we do not consider, uh, you know, rotary phone as technology because when we were born, uh, it was already there. So our kids, for them, mobile phone is not a big technology because it is already there when they were born. Similarly, as things go by, for different people, the technology has a different definition. For somebody who's 90 years old, even sometimes looking at uh, you know a, a flat screen TV is very very high technology. So I think it's a very relative definition. But I think the question really is that uh, thanks to the digitization of you know so many things, and now with government playing a role with mm -hmm. Aadhaar and all of these things, uh, you cannot be living without technology. In the past, it was possible to be in a remote village and say I have no technology. 
but today uh, you know wh wherever you are you will need an aadhar card which will finally digitize you in some way or the other which is the game changer okay uh, is it uh, important to have a plan for digital uh, the plan for digital is that you keep changing your plan that is the only <laughs> plan you can have you cannot think you know one year two years and five years i think your your thinking process needs to become shorter because disruptions happen all the time and you don't know like bank suddenly uh, didn't know that a competitor like paytm is going to come who is going to suddenly start giving people bank accounts uh, or for example you know health insurance companies suddenly didn't know that there'll be so much health data that there'll be companies who will be able to monitor people's health similarly there are many other industries uh, the car industry didn't know that they could be driverless cars in uber mm -hmm. so uber is actually impacting sales of cars because people are finding more convenient to use an uber driver than having their own car so while a traditional company would be worried about making the next car making it bigger better stronger nobody thought that uber will come and start impacting car sales so uh, today you could be hit by uh, the smallest startup anywhere in the world and the only way to survive this is to move fast and change okay uh, you know so far technology has been providing solutions for problems that were largely known uh, how does uh, technology actually move towards providing solutions for unknown problems so according to me there are two kinds of tech solutions so one is called a pain killer where there is a pain and you know it's a hard thing and right. technology helps solve it and the other is what i call the itch creator which is there is no pain but it creates a new need for you and then you start itching it and then you keep doing it and then you get new pains and it creates new opportunities so facebook is a great example of a itch creator before facebook we all had friends and we all lived happily and there was no problem but today facebook came in and has created this amazing need of being connected that it has actually become the new way of how we look at our friends and that has been a game changer as far as technology is concerned similarly in india and i tell this in every talk that uh, we have a country where using the same infrastructure you can order a pizza delivered in 30 minutes to you fresh hot and if it is not delivered your money is returned back but an ambulance cannot reach the same place in 30 minutes which doesn't have to prepare a pizza which just has to turn up to wherever you are so the challenge is that it is about making sure that there is a right uh, uh, the interest on in, of making sure that people want to do these things so right now there are so many food delivery companies but nobody is thinking of delivering uh, emergency healthcare to you because they are largely trying to copy foreign models and bring them to india so i think one of the key things which i think for india is necessary to look at problems here and then find the technology solutions which are going to become game changers okay uh, the one big disruption that you see uh, happening in 2016 i would say uh, i know there are several disruptions happening right i mean uh, the payment space for example is very very exciting uh, because uh, you know it changes right from what paytm is doing with the recharge to contactless payments to you know everybody every bank trying to innovate it is amazing that bank was somewhere where you went and the last thing you imagined was innovation mm -hmm. but today payment and banking space is directly becoming uh, you know uh, a victim of innovation from others but if you have to ask me the one thing which will be game changing is the government's role in disruption for the first time we have a national government which has said we support startups and we support disruption and we support innovation this has never happened before if you had an innovation you better make sure nobody knew it uh, from the government because they'll want to shut it down uh, today uh, net neutrality was an, again a very a great example of how we have an environment which is supporting startups and innovation and i think uh, imagine with a support like this companies who were you know doing all of these things in isolation suddenly get a national platform uh, would so i would say the big disruptor this year is going to be enablement of the government in helping this and not becoming a hindrance all right vishal thank you so much for joining us